Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show that that maximum likelihood estimator for variance that we came up with is actually biased. And along the way, I'll explain what bias means when we get to the end here. This is very similar to example 4.4.3 in the text. In the text, I draw three observations, whereas for this one, I'm going to draw two observations. So we're going to suppose that x is a Bernoulli random variable with parameter p equal to one half. So remember that means x is one with probability one half and it's zero with probability one half. Two observations are made. I'm going to call those x1 and x2 and I'm using capital letters uh, to signify that I'm really thinking of those as, re as random variables. And then we're going to let s squared be our estimate of sigma squared, and that's going to be 1 over n, since we have 2, that's 1 half, times the sum, i equals 1 to n, that's i equals 1 to 2, of xi minus x bar squared. So in this case, that's 1 half times x1 minus x bar squared plus x2. Whoops. Minus x bar squared. Okay, and the reason I wanted to use a Bernoulli distribution is we can list out all the possible outcomes without it taking an entire day or two. <laughs> okay, so we've got two random variables, x1 and x2. They're both observations of a Bernoulli random variable with parameter p equals one half. Well, there's four possibilities for the combination of outcomes here. Okay. I could have that they're both 0, I could have the x1 is 0, x2 is 1, I could have the x1 is 0, x2, or excuse me, x1 is 1 and x2 is 0, I could have the, or I could have that they're both 1. Actually, I want to extend these lines. That wasn't very pretty. Let's see here. We'll see if that's going to be long enough for us. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is compute x bar. And remember that x bar is the average of the outcomes. So the average here is 0, the average here is 0.5, it's 1 divided by 2, and then the average of 1 and 1 is just 1. Okay. So if I have x1 minus x bar squared, then that's 0 minus 0 squared here, that's 0. 0 minus 0.5 squared, that's 0.25. 1 minus 0.5 squared, that's 0.25. And then 1 minus 1 squared is 0. Okay, and then we do x2 minus x bar squared. What I'm doing is I'm finding, um, I'm going to find an expectation for this expression x2 minus x bar squared. Well, again, x2 and x bar is 0 for that first case, so that's 0. I got 1 minus 0 0.5, that's 0 0.25. Uh, 0 minus 0 0.5, take that and square it, that's 0.25. And then 1 minus 1 squared is 0. Okay, so s squared, the estimated variance, that's sort of ugly, let me rewrite it here s squared, the estimated variance is one half times the sum of these. So I have one half times zero, zero. One half times 0.25 plus 0.25 is one half times 0.5, that's 0.25, etc. Okay. Let me scroll down here. And each of these outcomes is equally likely. The probability that this is ha this would happen is one half times one half, since the probability that a random variable is zero is one half. The probability of this happening is one half times one half, etc. So these are equally likely. So the expectation of that value s squared, that's an ugly s squared again. I need to work on my s squareds. <laughs> is well, I get zero with probability one fourth. I get 0.25 with probability one-fourth 
well, in this case, I could also get it in that case, so the, actually the probability of getting 0.5 is 1 half as well as 0, because there's two different ways for it to occur. And I have 0.25 times 1 fourth plus 0.25 times 1 fourth. That's 0.5 times 1 fourth, and that's 1 eighth. And that's 1 eighth, which comes out to 0.125. Okay. However, sigma squared, that's what we're trying to estimate here. We know what that is. We are dealing with a Bernoulli random variable, and we showed in a previous video, as well as in the text, that sigma squared for a Bernoulli random variable is p times 1 minus p. So that's 0 0.5 times 1 minus 0 0.5. That's 0.25. The variance is 0.25, but if you look up at our chart of possible outcomes, we make two observations of this Bernoulli random variable and then compute the sample variance, this s squared equals one half times the sum of the squared deviations of the mean. Half the time we get 0.25, but half the time we underestimate it and we estimate that variance is zero. Okay, so because these two are different, expected estimation does not equal the value, that's what it means for our estimator to be biased. Estimator s squared is 1 over n times the sum as i equals 1 to n xi minus x bar squared is biased. And that's a term that I'm basically defining by this example. I've got an estimator, s squared is trying to estimate the variance, but when I take the expectation of that estimator, I do not get the actual value of what I'm trying to estimate. Okay, so that's what it means to be biased, and we've seen that now that the Sample variance is biased via an example, at least the formula that's arrived at by maximum likelihood estimation. What we're going to do next is show analytically that indeed the estimation arrived at by our s squared that we've been talking about so far does not equal the actual value. We tend to underestimate variance when we estimate it using this formula up here, this um, Let's see, I guess I don't have it up there, I have it down here. This 1 over n times the sum is i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar squared. That tends to give an underestimate of the variance. We're going to prove that. We're going to see it in another example. We'll see how to correct this variance. And then you'll also do a lab seeing how the variance is underestimated. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.